everyone and welcome to a new video. In this video I'll be reviewing Vintage Vogue pattern number 9052 and this is a lovely original 1949 design. An original design from the 1940s but I think it's been reprinted and re whatever um, for the modern day. So it's based on an original pattern and um, yeah I'll be going through my thoughts on this pattern, what I liked and didn't like about it, what I would do differently, etc. If you didn't already know, I have already made this dress um, in one of my previous videos. I made it out of a nice pale pink floral linen and that was the very first time that I used this pattern and it went so smoothly that I decided that I needed one for work as well. Um, so that's why I'm making this dress again but out of a more plain fabric so it's a good dress for work especially in the summertime anyway going on to what the pattern is so they describe the pattern as a mrs. jacket dress and belt so it's a loose fitting lined jacket which has a collar pockets and bound buttonholes and the dress is a pullover dress that has shoulder pads a fitted bodice, left side extension, snap or zipper closing and a self belt and both of those have top stitching. So that's how they describe the two garments on the pattern. I've not made the jacket. Personally I don't think I will be ever making the jacket. It's a bit outdated in my opinion but the dress, the dress is a very very classic design. It's definitely something that I can see Kate Middleton or Meghan Markle wearing. So that's why I made just the dress and I cut out the pattern in size 12 and that seems to fit me quite well. So I'm a 28 inch waist and like 34 inch bust and size 12 seems to fit me really well. So the fabrics they recommend using are flannel, tweed, wool jersey, linen, shaunting, and PK Pike. I'm not sure how to say that, but it's spelled P I Q U E, and the E has a little dash over the top. So if you know how to pronounce that word, please let me know. Um, yeah, and so they also recommend cotton batting for the shoulder pads and interfacing for the belt. Now, I deviated from the pattern a little bit um, when it comes to the fabrics and well, sorry, not the fabrics, but the, the construction method, I guess. So I decided to completely skip having shoulder pads. I think shoulder pads really does make it look dated, and I didn't want that. Um, and something that the pattern doesn't have is lining for the dress, like lining for the full dress. They only have lining for the jacket. That's what's recommended. So I decided to flatline all of my pieces, apart from the skirt. The skirt was like, is it bag lined? You just bag it out? Yeah, so this, the, the skirt lining is separate to the actual outer skirt fabric. But for the rest of it, the sleeves and the bodice, um, I flatlined all of my linen pieces with a white cotton. Um, yeah, so I decided to do that because the fabric I used, the linen, goes a bit transparent in the sunlight. Um, so that, that's why I decided to put lining, but if your fabric is um, completely opaque, then I would say just skip the lining, you don't, you don't need to have any lining in there. Anyway, um, what else is there to talk about? Let's see what I'm doing in the clips. So in the clips I'm ironing out the neck facing. So here's another difference um, to the pattern. I decided to just do the neck facing with the linen fabric so I didn't put any interfacing. Um, at, like I didn't attach any interfacing whether that be iron on or sew on interfacing on the neck facing. Um, simply because I, I just never use interfacing. I probably should but I'm not I don't really care. Um, and here I'm just showing the top, sorry, not the top stitching, the under stitching that I did. 
They don't have understitching in the instructions, but I do recommend that you do it. So it keeps the facing from peeking out. Now I'm sewing the skirt panels. So the pattern actually has really, really long skirt panels. So when I cut out my pattern pieces, I knew that I didn't want them that long. So I folded up the bottom part of the skirt and just cut the skirt shorter. Um, so the skirt would like fall just below my knees and I think that's a really nice um, modern length but it still has that vintage style because it's not above the knee, um, if that makes any sense at all. Basically I just think what would Kate Middleton wear <laughs> when I made this dress. Um, another thing is you can see the, you just would have missed it but here you can see it. I inserted a pocket. Um, there is no pocket piece for this pattern, um, but you can easily find pocket tutorials online. I followed Bernadette Banner's one, which is really good, and she's got a whole video explaining how you can make a pocket pattern. Anyway, that pocket that you saw me insert just then was a white pocket made out of the cotton fabric. The lining fabric but I decided that I didn't like it because it didn't blend well with the outer fabric. I, I don't know why I didn't decide this before I made the pocket that the pocket should be the same fabric as the outer fabric but anyway I unstitched the pocket and remade the pocket out of the outer fabric so you will see me put on the yeah here we go so now you can see that there's a new pocket and it's made out of the same fabric as the outer fabric so it's basically invisible which I really like. Anyway, um, now we're moving on to attaching the bodice to the skirt. For this I followed the instructions as is, it's all pretty simple. Um, nothing difficult about this part and I didn't change anything, I didn't deviate from the pattern instructions in this section. So that's that. And now you can see that the skirt's attached to the bodice. It's starting to take shape as a dress. There is that side opening where I need to still insert the zipper. Um, they have two options for the side opening. They have either you can use a zipper or a snap closure. And the snap closure requires like an extra panel piece. Um, I decided to go with the zipper. It's, it's easier in my opinion. So for the zipper I followed their instructions which is to hand prick the zipper I think it's called. No, it's called prick stitch. Yeah, so you sew the zipper by hand close to the edge with a prick stitch. So that's what I'm doing here. Now this is the exact same thing I did for the the first time I made this dress and I liked the way it looked. It was easy, it made sure that the zipper laid flat and there was no weird weirdness going on. Um, but if I was to make this again, I would, I think I would go for an invisible zipper and I would do it by machine. And that's, that's because with the dresses that, a dress like this where I would want to wear it in the workplace, I want it to have a more modern finish, a more seamless finish, whereas this prick stitched zipper leaves a little bit of a, like, it leaves a little bit of a flap of material where the zipper is. Um, so yeah, next time. Anyway, moving on to hemming the skirt. So for the lining skirt fabric, I just did a simple hem, as you can see. Oh, the sleeve. So the sleeve, I followed their instructions. I did insert lining. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing different here. Um, basically, ease stitch the upper edge of the sleeve. Um, so sort of like gathering stitches, but not really. Um, yeah, and then like fit the sleeve head into the sleeve arm side of the dress. Gosh, I'm really bad at explaining things. Anyway, I'm doing the e-stitching here. I think. 
Yes. Am I? Yes. And then using that ease stitching to ease the sleeve into the sleeve arm side of the dress and pinning that into place and then sewing that down. Um, yeah, I found it really difficult to get no puckers in the top of the sleeve and I think that's because um, when you wear this with shoulder pads it like evens that out and doesn't show all that gathering and puckering happening. Um, yeah, so to make this more modern if you want to, um, I would suggest lowering the sleeve head so there's not as much fullness to gather down in to, to fit the arm side. So you can see me going really slowly trying to make sure that there are no gathers or puckers in the sleeve. I did probably get one or two tiny puckers but that's okay. Uh, moving on to the hem of the outer skirt, I folded it up by about two inches and I ironed that down, pinned it in place. At this point the sleeves have not been hemmed and the bottom of the dress has not been sewn, it's just pinned, um, just so I can get the length right and everything. Pocket's all good, zip's all good. Yeah, so with the sleeves, um, I intentionally cut my sleeves so they would be really long. Um, because I did think that I would want my sleeves to be around elbow length, but then I decided against it. Um, the first time I made this dress, the sleeves ended up being quite a bit shorter than I thought they would be. Um, because in the picture, the illustration on the packet, the sleeves look quite long, at least like halfway down her, what do you call it, bicep, forearm, the upper part of your arm. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's why I cut my sleeves longer this time and I tried to make the sleeve the same length as what's shown in the illustration. And then for the hem of the dress, I just hand stitched that, and that's it, the dress is done. So I'll quickly go through some things. First of all, I used lining. The pattern has nothing to do with lining, at least for the dress. Um, only use it if you need to. I didn't use any interfacing, but I would recommend you use it for the neck facing because as you can see, mine is a little bit floppy. I didn't use any shoulder pads, I didn't make them because I think they look dated, but if you want to go for that authentic vintage look then by all means go for it. I didn't make the self belt, I ended up just using a modern belt because I am trying to modernise this dress. And lastly I added a pocket, which you can easily do but the pattern doesn't have a pocket piece. So overall I really like this dress. It's a classic, timeless design. Um, if you're looking for something that's quite simple and easy to make, I could, would definitely recommend this pattern. Um, and yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, leave a comment below, and yeah, check out some of my other videos now.